This year, I interviewed at a bunch of tech companies. And in this video, I wanted to share with you guys things that I learned from my experience. Hey guys, my name is Utsav and I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington. And this channel is all about helping you excel in your software engineering careers. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing to this channel. As usual, anything I reference or talk about in this video will be linked in the description below. So please feel to check those out. And this video will also have timestamps so you can jump around or skip to the sections that interests you the most. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So a little bit of a background for why this video exists, uh, for those that you don't know, is around June last year, I decided to take a year off from working full time to focus on my side projects and personal hobbies and things like that. So about summer this year is when I wanted to start working full time again. So with that in mind, around February 2021 is when I started interviewing with a lot of companies. And this video is about that experience. So the first thing I learned about the whole process is that preparation is critical. And I know this sounds like common sense and a no brainer, but here's what happened to me. Even before early 2021, right after I started my break, maybe around last summer or fall, I got an opportunity to interview with a company that I kind of was excited to work for. So I thought to myself, you know what, I'm not ready to work right away, but what do I lose by interviewing with them, right? Um, so I accepted the opportunity to interview and in my mind, I thought I was fairly prepared because I've been in the industry for a long time, I've worked on good projects and I actively used to interview candidates as well. So I was kind of in the know-how about what interviews expect, what kind of questions to prep for and things like that. So I took about one or two weeks to kind of brush up on my data structures and algorithms, tried a few questions on lead code and felt fairly confident going in. To my surprise, the real interview was completely different. It was way more challenging. Let's just say that I completely bombed it. And I think the first thing I underestimated was the pressure that comes to you immediately after you're a candidate instead of an interviewer. Not only that, but as an interviewer, your job is to pick up signals. So you're looking for very specific things. So your job, I think, is a lot easier than a candidate where in a very limited amount of time, you're managing a lot of different things. Not only do you have to manage your interviewer's expectations and understand what they are looking from you, but you have to actually make sure that you're making progress to have the problem. And then you have to manage your code editor. You have to give examples, test cases, optimal solutions and doing all this, most companies are also kind of quizzing you on some behavioral aspects of your personality. So I think my conclusion from this that I'm trying to explain to you is it really requires deliberate practice and a structured schedule and a consistent schedule for you to be ready to actually interview as a candidate. The second thing I learned was that you have to interview a lot and you have to organize your interviews very deliberately. What I mean by this is, so the first interview when I bombed it, even though part of me wanted to go back to interviewing again because I wanted to prove to myself that I can do better, there was a lot of resistance in my mind thinking that, oh my God, I have to do this whole prep again. So I, I just stopped, I didn't practice. I was like, you know what? I decided to take a break. I'm just gonna take a break. So early this year though, when I started, I wanted to fix that by making sure that I had actually scheduled all my interviews. So every recruiter that had reached out to me earlier that year, I just told them, hey, let's circle back again early next year and then schedule something. That was my standard response and that's why early January, either they contacted me again or I reached out to them. I was like, hey, let's schedule this on this date, this date, this date. So, so even before I started my prep, I had a bunch of interviews already lined up. So that not only held me accountable to start prepping properly, but also whenever I finished one interview, regardless of whether it went good or bad, there wasn't really time to mourn about it or feel sad or think about what to do next. I just had to learn from the experience, make some changes if I have to, and immediately go on to the next because they came in thick and fast, right? One more thing about this is when you want to structure your interviews, you do want to keep uh, the least exciting interviews up front and your most um, coveted companies towards the end, obviously, because as you interview more, you get better and you get more practice. So you want to keep the best ones towards the end. So think of it as a list of companies that you can interview with and sorting them by uh, your favorite, 
by the length of the interview process and the similarity between their interview styles. So third thing kind of builds up on the first two points is don't even bother trying to interview or trying to solve interview problems if you're rusty on your data structures and algorithms. Honestly, without the fundamental knowledge of data structures and algorithms, you're just setting yourself for failure. And you may end up solving a few, or you may get lucky with others, or you may end up memorizing, which is even worse, some solutions and feel good about yourself. But I will promise you that the only way to succeed in technical interviews is to nail your fundamentals of data structures and algorithms. The fourth thing that I learned or experienced uh, was that advanced data structures and algorithms, even for a senior software engineer, uh, wasn't there at all. Nobody asked me anything advanced that I didn't know about or that I felt that, oh, I should have looked at this. The only odd ones that I can remember was there was one question where I was uh, asked a variation of breadth search. It was almost like Dijkstra's, but not really the exact algorithm where uh, the question I was asked had to use a variation of the priority queue. I don't think that was out of the ordinary. And the other one that I got stumped because I don't come from a Python background is um, there was a question that needed a monotonically increasing double-ended queue uh, to be solved. And I ended up solving it, but I really had never used a data structure that was like that. So I just had to come up with it or sort of implement it myself. If you understand how linked lists work and if you understand the principles behind the queue, and if you know what a monotonically increasing array or, or a data structure is, you should be able to come up with it. So I don't think it's an advanced data structure again. So outside of that, there, there was really no advanced data structure. But while I didn't get any advanced data structures, um, I did find that two questions in one interview seems like a norm these days. And some even, I had three questions in one interview, especially at company like Facebook. So be prepared to go in to answer more than one question. At least that was very common for my interview experience. The single biggest resource I think that you can find or you can do for yourself during prepping for interviews that has the biggest ROI is mock interviews. Do not ignore mock interviews. And I'm not talking about one mock interview or two mock interviews. I'm talking about like 10, 15, 20, if you can do it, right? If you wanna interview for 10 companies or 20 companies, do 20 mock interviews. If you can, find engineers from those companies and ask them if they can mock interview you. Some will do it for free, some you can find from your network, mentors, friends, and if you really have to pay for it, pay it. It will be worth it. But that being said, I also see a lot of candidates just go to things like Pramp or interviewing.io or things like that. That will just match you up with someone else that will interview you and you interview them. That's cool. It will get rid of your interview nerves and give you some experience in a time pressure scenarios. But make sure that if you're really spending money and time into mock interviews, that the interviewer is actually a seasoned interviewer who can give you proper feedback because they're trained to look for the right signals. They're trained to evaluate candidates and they will be able to give you the right kind of feedback that will help you. All right, let's move to system design because I know you guys are probably thinking why I'm not talking about system design. One thing I learned about system design is that quality system design resources are really hard to find. Like even for experienced engineers like me who have worked on distributed systems for many years, system design is still a hard topic because you have such a limited time and you're expected to solve a random design problem. Even though I have a lot of experience, I can draw from it and I can kind of roughly put together something. I can't really come up with like a really good solution about something that I've never worked with, right? And the idea generally with a system design interview is supposed to be that you come up with a reasonable solution and have a good discussion. That's how it's placed. But in my experience, that's not how it is. It starts off like that, but they really expect you to deep dive into something especially as a senior. So if I get designed Google Docs and I've never prepped for it, I just went on based on my experience that hey, I've worked in distributed system, I understand how things work, you know. I go in and I may be able to give a reasonable solution how this may work, but there's no way I'm gonna deep dive into the basics of how like operational transform. I think they have a new algorithm now that works. Um, Kleppman talks about it. Um, there's no way I can come 
with that on the fly, right? Like people have done 20 years of research and PhDs on that topic. How do you expect me to uh, come up with that solution without deliberately prepping for it, right? So I do think that you do need to prep if you want to succeed in system design. But the problem is that all of the resources, especially YouTube channels that I find, are not in-depth enough to help you with that. And most of them seems like if they say design Google Docs, they'll just go to engineering blogs from Google that they talk about, here's how we design Google Docs, and they'll basically read that and make a video on YouTube, which is cool, but it will never have enough detail, especially for a senior software engineer, to kind of gain enough knowledge to deep dive on it. So that, that was at least my experience. For beginners, that may work. For seniors, I think you really have to invest on uh, dedicating time into getting better at designing systems. Really work with a lot of uh, cloud services, try to buy different books, read for months, not just when you're interviewing, just be curious about how things are built and over time you'll develop the knowledge. That's why it's become so tricky. And I was lucky that I already had some background, so it was easier for me to pick up, but I definitely felt that why a lot of people panic or a lot of people find it really difficult to pick up things on system design, because it's not like coding where you can practice for three weeks or one month and you get better at it. It takes a long time, but there are a lot of resources to learn system design and there are videos and YouTube channels that are aimed at beginners. So if you're a beginner, that's pretty good. So the next point I want to talk about is also about system design and it's about how you feel about the interview. Um, so with system design, I noticed that almost every interview that I gave, I kind of felt good about it. Um, as in, I thought I did well uh, and some went really well, some actually didn't, but the feeling that I had after the interview was that I always did well, right? And because it's ambiguous and it's more conversational and um, it's kind of hand wavy and you talk about a lot of things and you know maybe you'll deep dive in something maybe you want but in the end you've designed this elaborate diagram about all these data flows and you know like things and machines and cachings and redundancy and replications and different data centers and things like that and you feel good about it because you feel like yeah this system is really good right but that I promise you is a very misleading feeling because half of my system design interview where I thought I did amazingly well and turned out to be that I actually didn't do well. And that was one of the reasons I got rejected, you know? Because it's conversational and hand wavy, it feels like a conversation between two engineers and that's why it is kind of talked about as well, but it's actually a very really technical interview. So make sure you're on point, you're focused and you're, you, you practice the timings and the details and technical sides in a system design interview, because that is the interview that will decide not only whether you get hired, but at which level you get hired and most likely what compensation you get. System design is the interview that decides that. And in most companies, because there are multiple coding interviews and even in each coding interview, there are multiple questions, you can do not so well in one or two and probably could still get an offer, but you do badly in a system design interview, it's game over. So please prioritize system design, especially if you're anyone that has more than a couple of years of experience. Learn about how to negotiate compensation and practice that negotiation beforehand. I know there are a lot of companies that kind of help you do that as well. If you think that's fair, you can do it. But if you're up for it, there's a lot of information available online, how to negotiate and how to kind of place yourself or sell yourself. Um, and you can learn from that and kind of at least practice before you get into the situation of having to do that. Because if you've structured your practice well, and if you've done well, you'll end up in a multiple offer situation and you'll have to negotiate. Um, it's a great place to be, but it's also a lot of headache and it's really stressful to kind of talk to different uh, recruiters and kind of negotiate compensation, especially if you are yourself not sure about which of the three companies you want to join or you want, you like all of them equally, right? And then uh, one thing I wanted to warn you about is it can easily get into a situation where all you are focusing on is the compensation because someone else offered you more than you were anticipating and then your game plan completely changed and now you want the other companies to give you more and it can 
quickly spiral down into a conversation about purely money and that's not how you want to go about it. So what I recommend is before you even start interviewing, know what you're worth and be honest with yourself. Don't just blindly go to uh, sites like Blind, no pun in intended, and see people post ex like unreal salaries. Maybe they're lying, maybe they're not even honest. Um, or levels.fyi, that's a good side, but there's a big range and there's many reasons why people get paid more or less. And that's a complicated equation. Not everyone gets the same. So be honest and understand what you are worth based on what you've done, what you can do, or uh, based on your experience, based on what companies you've worked, and be reasonable about that. When you know that, the first thing you want to do when you negotiate is to find for that worth. You need to get what you think you're worth. And that's when you leverage not only your past work, but your interview um, results and your competing offers to kind of put confidence into that idea that, hey, I'm worth this much, right? But once you get that, the topic should change to evaluating the company, the team, the projects, the culture, and you should you should change focus to do those things because in the long run, once you get what you're worth, uh, the things that will truly make you happy working for a company are those other things, not just your total compensation. So do practice negotiation because you should deserve or get what you think you deserve. And if you're honest about where, what you're worth and you get that, do switch focus to um, the culture, team, projects, and things like that. So yeah, that's it. That's all I had. These are the things I, I found interesting, uh, looking at them from the perspective of a candidate and not as an interviewer. And I hope you found them useful and interesting in some form. If you did, please hit the like button. Let me know what you thought about it and do subscribe or share the video. And I'll see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>